Welcome back to the NWR Aussie Resources Conference. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Next up, we have Matt Gill. He's the CEO and Managing Director of White Rock Minerals. The ASX code is WRM. They're also on the OTCQX. Ticket code there is WRMCF. Now, ring the bell. Victoria's newest high-grade gold producer. Well done, Matt. <laughs> Over to you to present what I think is a fantastic story. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Kerry, and thanks for the listeners. Look, it's a great milestone for, for any junior to join the ranks of uh, gold producers. And uh, we announced that uh, earlier this month, uh, on track, uh, on time. Uh, we, we recovered some gold from some stockpiles after commissioning. Uh, I'll go into the story a little bit more from our Woods Point mine. But yes, uh, uh, we're now a producer. Uh, so I'll, I'll run through uh, my talk. Uh, I'll go fairly quickly. Uh, this is on our website. Uh, it has been lodged with the ASX. So if there are interested listeners, I encourage them to go to our website and read it uh, and look at the projects in a bit more detail, given that I've got about 15 minutes, which I will make sure that I don't go over. And I'm sure Kerry will tell me uh, if I do. And so also, all... if people out there want to ask questions, please put your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Okay, Matt. All right, thanks, thanks, Kerry. So the normal disclaimer, given that we're ASX listed, you can uh, read that at your leisure. So in, in a nutshell, what is White Rock? We have three assets, so uh, hence needing to go fairly quickly through. Our, our key focus right now is our Woods Point Gold Project uh, east of Melbourne, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that. It's got a great land package, uh, exploration potential. It's got a functioning mine on mining lease, gold processing plant. We've also got a significant tier one asset in Alaska. Uh, it's zinc, silver, uh, lead and gold. It's both VMS and IRGS gold related. Fantastic jurisdiction, great opportunities. We've got a great jork resource and lots of targets there. I'll just touch briefly on that. It's now going into winter there in Alaska. Uh, and then third, but not to forget, um, the asset that White Rock listed with, Mount Carrington in northern New South Wales. It's significant. It's on mining leases. It's got jork resources for silver. It's got jork resources for, for gold. It's got a jork reserve for gold, a PFS. And we're in JV with ASX listed Thompson Resources, where we are free carried while they do expiration. So there are three assets, great jurisdictions. Um, not investment advice, um, people should do their own. But what are we? Uh, as I mentioned, you know, great significant amounts of gold, uh, silver and zinc. Uh, Red Mountain in Alaska, as I mentioned, significant land package, uh, significant quantities of zinc. In the US, it is a critical mineral, which is a fantastic um, position for it to be in. And in fact, copper isn't a critical mineral in the US, which I only read this morning, which is quite surprising. Oh. Uh, but silver is also plays a very important role in, in this green economy, in solar panels in particular. Now, Carrington, I've mentioned with Jork Resources and Woods Point, where we're currently mining and producing gold. Uh, again, I encourage the, the, the listener to go and have a look at uh, that in detail, if, if they wish. Now, I'm not the last MD that's ever going to sit in front of the <laughs> listener and say we're undervalued. Um, my comment would be, is even if these valuations are half right, there's got to be an opportunity for, for, for the investor. Uh, I think what motivates me, Kerry, is to try and unlock some of that value that other independent companies have seen in the assets and try and get that value into our share price for our shareholders. I think the most important one there is the Valmin. Valmin is an internationally recognised valuation code. So you can see a significant mismatch. My job is to try and get some of that value um, into the shareholders' hands. Uh, again, all of this is available for people to have a look at. Quick company snapshot, um, not, not too bad a, a share structure. Um, we've got some great institutions on our register under those nominees. Uh, and we've also got a couple of high net worths, um, both here in Australia and New Zealand. So a great mix for a small junior of institutional and retail, uh, and, and a small board of three, as you'd expect, with an ASX listed company. So jumping straight into it, Woods Point, um, it is Victoria's newest gold producer. That photo on the right is the plant, uh, the Gecko Gravity plant. It also produces a, a, a gold con, not just gold Dore bars. In the background is the head frame uh, that accesses the uh, Morningstar mine, 
that goes down 800 metres, and I'll, I'll touch on that. So when White Rock acquired uh, the Woods Point project, it was a merger with ASX-listed Ostar Gold back in August last year. We immediately jumped into some drilling. We've done over 10,000 metres of drilling. We've identified at least five areas, um, despite a lot of people saying the old time has got it all, um, we found at least five areas above nine level and we've started mining in one of them, accessing a second with plans for another two. And as I mentioned, we've recommissioned the plant, but we've also got a significant regional exploration package and we've commenced the permitting to try and drill, not try and drill, to drill, um, uh, the first of a, a lot of targets that we see ahead of us, and I'll touch on that in a minute. So the Morning Star mine itself, fantastic history. It was mined by GMA, Gold Mines of Australia, so the forerunner to Western Mining, WMC. It was so rich that it gave birth to that company. Uh, over 800,000 ounces in its time at 26 grams a tonne. Uh, it's a diorite dike, uh, which is that green um, uh, image that you see on the left and it's cross-cut with multiple quartz veins. Fairly narrow, averaging sort of 0.3 to 0.6 of a metre, but very high grade, and I'll show you some of the results that we've got. And so it's these quartz reefs that we, we intend to, and are mining. Um, goes down, the shaft goes down 800 metres. It's flooded below 10 level, so about 300 metres down. We're currently mining above nine level. We've been drilling in an area called the gap zone. Um, so lots of potential above us. In the, in the first nine levels and below us, and I'll touch on that. Uh, it came, as I said, with a mining lease, infrastructure, shaft, head frame, winder, processing plant. Uh, it would be very difficult to get something like that these days. Um, so fantastic uh, leg up for White Rock. Um, and as I said, the drilling has shown that we've got lots of areas now ahead of us and we've restarted the mining. What sort of areas have we identified? We've, so we've identified the upper area called Dickinson South and we drilled that from surface. And that's that photo on the right. We've identified areas basically between six level and nine level around the Kenny's and McNally's area. And we're currently mining in McNally's and also this significant area called the gap zone um, where very little drilling has occurred and no mining has occurred. Uh, and that's that photo on the bottom right. Sorry, Matt, can I just ask you, how deep is the gap zone? So the gap zone is about 200 vertical metres, Kerry. Okay. Um, so significant. So that, that dike, just to put into perspective, the gap zone uh, is about 600 metres long. It's about 60 metres wide and 200 metres in vertical depth. So you can hide a lot of gold mm. uh, in, in that area. And uh, that, that's our medium term target once we've uh, identified and got into mining these areas above nine level. You can see some of the some of them, not certainly not all of the high grade drill hole results. So while fairly narrow, uh, we adopt a narrow vein mining technique, um, significant grades, one, two, three ounces a tonne. And that's the great nature of this. Um, you spend your money moving tonnes, not ounces. So the more ounces there are in those tonnes, the less the more ounces we can get up the, the shaft to the mill um, and we don't have to mine half of Victoria to get those tonnes to the mill. So, you know, they do say grade is king and they say that for a reason. Um, and so I would take high grade any day. The other area between basically six level and nine level, Kenny's and McNally's, we've started mining in McNally's as we speak. And again, you can see some of the high grade drill hole results um, that we've been getting. And there's this quirk of nature called gap zone. Essentially what happened is uh, mining was above 10 level. Um, 1939, big bushfire, World War II, mining stopped, um, recommenced after World War II. The government funded sinking the shaft and they knew that there was a high grade drill hole at depth. So they just pushed on from 10 level through the what now has become the gap zone and recommenced mining around 14 level. So it left this area in between with very little mining. So above nine level, half a million ounces have been mined. Below 14 level, 300,000 ounces have been mined. But as I mentioned, in this 200 metre area, no mining, very little drilling. We've just finished our first pass of that gap zone, fairly wide space to get structural uh, sense of what might be going on there. We've already had a couple of very nice high grade hits over 700 grams a tonne. We're waiting on the last of the assays to do the structural interp and then we'll be going back into drilling, infill drilling in that 
zone. Once we understand the structural relationships, joining the dots of these quartz reefs is very, very important. Uh, multiple reefs, different directions. Uh, we need to make sure that we've got a good handle on the model before we before we do too much more drilling, so we know where to target, and certainly before we know when to start accessing for, for mining. As I mentioned, we've got the four areas. Dickinson Reef, uh, we're accessing on four level as we speak. Um, off that will be Exhibition Reef, which we're accessing. Stackpool Reef from that, and McNally Reef we're already mining. So as I said, Gary, despite 800,000 ounces coming from this mine, it's not an old mine. We've, with just, with just 10,000 metres of drilling, have been able to identify five areas and have enough confidence to restart mining. That's the plant. So we, we've commissioned that plant. It was on care and maintenance for a year. We processed uh, some low-grade stockpile and, and recovered some gold and poured some gold bars out of that. So that's, that's the, a great step. We're now producing uh, or milling and, and uh, producing concentrate from the first high-grade mining. Uh, that we've been doing in, in the last two months. Uh, and that's now with the refiner as we speak. So um, very exciting times. And as I mentioned, yep, joining the League of Producers is, is a nice step in, in an ongoing story. Ongoing story, it's not the end of it. It's just the uh, end of the beginning, if you like. Just the start. Yep, yep. Not to forget regional exploration. We've got uh, 660 square kilometres of underexplored. It's a common statement, but this is underexplored uh, east of Melbourne. The, the topography is fairly hilly, but therein lies the opportunity to find the hidden gems. You can see the sort of um, grades that some of these historical prospects um, have yielded. Uh, the, the, the trick here is that only eight of them have ever had any drilling. Um, mm. And generally, the tenement package has been held by juniors that have never had the time or the capital to, to do the regional exploration in a disciplined way. And that's what we'd like to think White Rock brings to this story as well. Um, there, are, there are multiple occurrences of, of um, prospects over two ounces a tonne, uh, as I mentioned, and they're the things that we want to follow up in, uh, in 2023. To give you an example, Wallaby, we're going through the approvals process to drill this. It has the potential to be a lookalike to Morning Star. The old timers went down 100 metres and hit the water table and stopped. Uh, it's never had one drill hole in it. Uh, and that, that's our first priority for, for 2023. Not to forget our other two assets, and I'll move fairly quickly through those. Uh, so Red Mountain in Alaska, as I mentioned, um, significant land package. It, it sits in a great VMS belt. Uh, we have a significant York resource, uh, 11 million tonnes at over 550 grams a tonne silver equivalent uh, is a significant asset base. Uh, there are multiple drill targets uh, still before us uh, and both in gold and in the silver zinc VMS space. Uh, Alaska's in the top five of jurisdictions uh, in the Fraser Institute. Uh, and a lot of people think, oh, how can you do it from Australia? It's so far around the world, it's only a six hour time difference because um, it's just across the Pacific. So in fact, it's a really good overlap. And we've got a great team uh, in country out of Fairbanks uh, that have run our last four drill programs in, in Alaska. So we're well positioned. We don't try and run it from, uh, from here in Ballarat, from, from the office. Um, we have a great team, as I mentioned, there in, in country. As I mentioned, the land package is significant. It's VMS uh, to, the, to the right, to the east, uh, including the two Jork resources. There are multiple targets in the KV trend, which are those, those cross picks uh, along the bottom there to the right. Uh, and out to the left, we've got further VMS prospects. Never had a drill hole in them. Uh, White Rock discovered those. And then just to the south of that, on the bottom left-hand diagram there, last chance. Uh, it's a different geology that's an IRGS, so an intrusive related gold system. Significant uh, gold anomaly, about 15 square kilometres. So we're blessed with two types of geology, VMS with high-grade silver zinc, um, but also gold. Um, all of them, more, more targets than we know what to do with in, in terms of drilling would probably be one way uh, to put it. So, so Matt, uh, just on that, uh, are you drilling at the moment? No, no, the onset of winter now. So um, uh, when I say winter, the weather starts to deteriorate around now. So no, no drilling this year, Kerry. 
Okay. Uh, so an example of the rich potential, we discovered this KV trend. You can see some of the photos of the uh, surface rock that uh, we, we recovered and some of the significant grades that go with that. Um, that's the beauty of VMS. It's, it's polymetallic, significant grades, and you need to have the good grades for it to, to be a mine in, in Alaska. I mean, that's, that's what you do need. So we think we've got a fantastic asset here. As I mentioned, though, first priority, you can't do everything you want at once, uh, is to get wood point up and going and uh, producing gold. And then uh, in parallel, in an ideal world, uh, be, be progressing uh, our Red Mountain asset as well. As a comment I made, uh, it sits in the Tintinna Gold Belt. So not only is it VMS, but it sits in this intrusive related gold system. Um, Pogo, most people will have heard of. Uh, point to note, we, we were in Alaska before Northern Star, uh, but Fort Knox uh, run by Kinross and Donlan, which is a barrack JV. So significant uh, address. Uh, there are a few Australian players, Nova Minerals, uh, in, uh, in Alaska as well. Uh, and just to give you an idea, this is the last chance. Uh, I mentioned significant size, significant potential, lots of dual targets, so not just VMS, as I mentioned. And then last but not least, not to forget Mount Carrington, Northern New South Wales, Cook Resources, Cook Reserves, you literally walk onto all. Uh, that's that photo in the top right. Um, it's got a PFS and we're currently being free carried in a joint venture uh, with Thompson Resources. So that's a really good arrangement for, for White Rock. It allows the project to be advanced. It allows the investor to stay exposed to Mount Carrington and its significant upside, and allows us to focus on Woods Point and also on Alaska. Uh, being a small junior, you can't. You, you need to focus your, your time and your, and your efforts. So these are the key points, Kerry, um, and with that, I'll, I'll wind up. So Woods Point, um, functioning gold mine, uh, we're, we're mining, we're producing, uh, we've got significant in-mine exploration potential above nine level, as I mentioned, but also the gap zone. Uh, the Red Mountain VMS, um, we've also got the large last chance gold target, not to forget Mount Carrington. I think very important for the listener is the jurisdictional diversification. We are in tier one locations, they do speak English, they do follow the rule of law. I think that's fairly important. I've, I've worked in some interesting places in the world and uh, sovereign risk is a real issue that an investor should consider in their portfolio. Not, not just how sexy the drill grades are and not just how sexy the commodity is, but where is it? And, and what's the likelihood that you've got tenure and security of that asset and able to bring it to market? And then also, again, I won't be the last person to ever say that we've got a good, broad and deeply experienced uh, board and management team. So look, with that, Gary, I will I will finish. I will let the listener um, okay. have a look at our website. And with that, thanks, NWR. Um, yep, thank you, NWR. Uh, quickly, Matt, because we're running out of time, what's the forecast production this year at Woods Point? So we're in ramp up phase, Kerry. So we haven't released any forward looking statement numbers yet. Um, we're also required under ASX listing rules and JORC to have resources and reserves really to be making those predictions. So at this stage, um, we're going, we're taking it cautiously. Narrow vein underground nuggety gold mining um, requires that. Um, mm. We will let the market know what we've been doing rather than say this is what we plan to do. We'll tell them what we have done. And I think from that, people will be able to work out what the potential is for the mine. Um, a quick last one. Uh, can you walk through the 30 million con note agreement with Obsidian? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's in two parts. So it's a $7.5 million con note um, and a $22.5 million equity facility. Um, of the seven and a half million dollar con note, we're drawing on the first two and a half million. Um, the rest um, we will determine as and when we so desire to draw on that. Uh, the same with the equity facility, if and when we desire to to draw on that. So any drawing on those facilities is at White Rock's election, and we will pace ourselves um, commensurate with how successful we are in ramping up our production. Clearly, you know, the more we can produce and the quicker we can get to cash flow position, the less likely we, we are to, to require drawing on any uh, other facility. And I guess that's your focus, isn't it? Get to the cash flow, 
no, so that you're not diluting the shareholders. And by the way, I just want to point out, you've got a nice tight share structure there as well, Matt. So congratulations. But for now, uh, if people want to reach out to you, please contact Matt, uh, info at whiterockminerals.com.au. Lots and lots of information. He's a busy guy. Thanks for joining us at the NWR Aussie Resources Conference today, Matt. Good to see you. Thanks, Kerry.